Chances are, if you're a movie fan, or even if you're not for that matter, you've always known there was nepotism and corruption in Hollywood. I mean, how else did Sofia Coppola get to star in and ruin possibly the greatest trilogy in cinema history? However, you probably never quite knew how deep nepotism runs in Hollywood. And in this video essay, I'm going to go over the most powerful family in Hollywood history and why you can't judge a good movie or actor just from reviews and award nominations, and why you always have to watch out for the propaganda that can be purported via Hollywood and the news. So unless you were some insane Hollywood cinema buff, you probably haven't heard of the Selznick family, or the Meyer family for that matter. However, you definitely have heard of both Paramount and Metro Goldwyn Meyer, you know, the one with the lion, and you probably never knew that they were both connected. Oh yeah, and they both funded and own the Academy Awards, which is probably why Paramount has the second most Oscar Best Picture wins, despite having 40 less nominations than 20th Century Fox. In order for us to really understand how and why Paramount and MGM Studios own and pretty much control the whole Hollywood industry, we have to take it back to 1884 Minsk, Poland which at the time was under Russian rule and where Louis B. Meyer was born to two poor Jewish parents. Shortly after being born in 1885, they immigrated to Long Island and then eventually settled in Massachusetts. Louis dropped out of school at 12 to help his father in the scrap metal business. However, he slowly developed the bug for entrepreneurship and after spending his whole life as a struggling immigrant, he decided to take a risk and try to make some money for his family. He saved up and bought a local theater in Massachusetts Massachusetts and began to play films. Over the coming years, he grew his cinema chain to the point where he partnered with another chain owner, Harry Gordon, and created the Gordon Meyer Theatre Chain, which became the largest theatre chain in New England. From here, he started his own film distribution company, and his first funded film was The Birth of a Nation, which was a racist film supporting the Ku Klux Klan murder of Abraham Lincoln, and portrayed black Americans as dumb and extremely sexually driven. So yeah, MGM didn't start off too good by today's standards. However, the film, despite being controversial, was a hit, and his film production empire took off. As his empire grew, he wanted to gain more and more control of Hollywood, and it was at this exact exact moment that Louis B. Meyer's daughter, Irene, fortunately fell in love with David O. Selznick, who was a film producer and one of the leading men at Paramount Pictures, which in turn allowed Louis B. Meyer and David Selznick the ability to control both MGM and Paramount, which were the two leading production companies at the time. But despite having control of more than 70% of Hollywood, Louis B. Meyer wanted more money and more power, and the ability to control how well his movies would perform rather than rely on public demand. So he formed the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, in short, the Oscars. This allowed Louis B. Meyer the ability to control what was seen as a good movie and what wasn't, as the public seemed to think any movie that was nominated for an Oscar were the best movies and they didn't question the validity of the nominations, as it was more unknown that Meyer started the Academy. This just goes to show how deep the corruption runs in Hollywood and how the major studios are able to control the narrative and the minds of the public. However, what is even worse than this is the fact that once World War II began, many other studios didn't produce German films as they didn't agree with the propaganda they were purporting about Jewish people. But despite being Jewish himself, Louis B. Meyer produced many German Nazi propaganda films as he didn't want to lose money from his European audience as they made up over 40% of his entire audience base. He was warned from the government that this went against their beliefs, however he didn't seem to mind as he was making a much larger profit than any of his American studio competitors. On top of the backlash from World War II, Louis B. Meyer suffered more blows to his name and company as he was accused of sexual assault from 13-year-old actress at the time, Judy Garland, and Jean Howard. However, these allegations fell through with many members questioning the legality of the way Louis escaped the charges. However, following this rough six-year period of Louis B. Meyer's life, his second daughter, Edith, married William Goetz, who at the time was vice president of 20th Century Fox. 
So from there, not only did Maya control Paramount and MGM, he now had an in at Fox as well. And to this day, over 50% of the Best Picture wins at the Oscars were produced by studios that Louis B. Meyer had control of. It goes to show how deep the corruption works at Hollywood, and the industry for quite a long time was based on corruption, propaganda, and power. However, as of late, the Academy has distanced itself from its past and has actively worked to better include diversity and allow equal opportunity for many smaller and diverse filmmakers. However, one thing I hope we can all learn from this video is to always question the narrative being pushed by the media and pop culture and see if there are ulterior motives behind it. As always, hope you like this video and I'll see you on my next one.